Even of Groundhog Day must endure. We have all passed through the darkness of night, but now see hope in morning's bright light. But now, when I turn to see, there's a perfect shadow cast of me. Six more weeks of winter there will be. We're still facing a very dark winter. If we continue to abide by and use and implement the public health measures together with an increasing number of people who get vaccinated, I hope we can get a trend that will continue to come down lower and lower. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. So my first question to you is the Pfizer vaccine got its emergency use authorization late Friday night and vaccinations have begun for healthcare workers. Is this finally light at the end of the tunnel? So, Whoopi, first of all, thank you for having me on. And, and I, this is light at the end of the tunnel. This is the beginning of the end. Government should focus on tackling the virus and avoid politicization. No matter where they are in terms of the outbreak, they should keep investing in the health system and workforce and improving testing, tracing, and treatment of all cases. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the vaccine is really going to be the next step to get us out of this terrible pandemic. The masking is health, the social distancing is health. But to really immunize uh, the community, get herd immunity, so we can go back to doing the things that we want to do, uh, all the routine things that we consider normal living, the vaccine is our endpoint. And this is truly the light at the end of the tunnel. You can't compartmentalize it to work. It affects your life. It affects your holidays. I know my holidays. My Thanksgiving holiday was quite different and my Christmas holiday will be quite different, not being able to spend time with as much family as we'd like. But this to me is a light at the end of the tunnel and what we have to stay focused on right now. Now we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, Mr. President. Operation Warp Speed has given us safe and effective vaccines in record time. But the American people need another bridge to those better days that are not so far off. And we don't know yet what the impact of these new variants will have on, on the arc of the, of the disease or the pandemic. So while I think it's encouraging, we can sort of see maybe the light at the end of the tunnel. It's hardly time to relax our vigilance in terms of mask wearing. I think by the end of Q2, you might be in a place in the U.S. where basically you have any American who is willing to get vaccinated, have access to a vaccine and goes back to a normal life. Go back to traveling, go back to see friends, go back to movie theaters and trips and so on. Uh, I think we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Now in the United States, Donald Trump said he hoped Boris Johnson would make a swift return to health. The president predicted that the US is nearing the peak of the outbreak, saying he could see light at the end of the tunnel. At the Daily White House briefing, President Trump said he was encouraged by the better news. Things are happening. We're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. I, I think the market is seeing um, light at the end of the tunnel in terms of um, when you look at numbers of infections. Pfizer says so far the trial hasn't shown any serious safety concerns. Aurora's infectious disease physician, Dr. Robert Sitchenberg. For the first time, it provides light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, it's been quite worrying and you feel quite vulnerable, um, but it's just wonderful now. I sort of feel it's all beginning to move and the light's uh, at the end of the tunnel. Of course, I, I do want to, you know, there are caveats and we are going to have to be careful moving forward, but I think we've got this light at the end of the tunnel now. If everything goes well, the first European citizens might already be vaccinated before the end of December. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm, I'm, I'm down here in the spirit that is this moment, uh, enthusiastic that there is light at the end of the tunnel, but mindful that we're still in the tunnel. When we went through 0809, and I've seen actually people drawing comparisons, this could be like the Great Depression, which I strongly, strongly disagree with, is you have light at the end of the tunnel. The, the light at the end of this tunnel uh, is really the vaccination. Our pilgrims are desperate to go uh, on their pilgrimages, and it's, it's kind of like the light at the, at the end of the tunnel now. New at 10, a light at the end of the tunnel. That's normal. Our forecasts are better. The, the fast vaccination in Israel is probably the leader uh, in terms of the rate of vaccination per capita. 
uh, is definitely giving us a, a light at the end of the tunnel. I, I believe that uh, the second half of uh, 21 will be a very different experience for many of us. Because the light is, is real. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully that trend will continue. So as I say, I'm a very cautious person, but we are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. You can't blame me for trying. I think we all are just waiting for Dr. Fauci to say, yes, okay, the worst, yes, the worst. but he will always tell the truth. He and says. by the way, I don't, that's the first thing, time I think I've seen him laugh, and I like his laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Savannah. <laughs> it's hope they're the beginning of the end. Can we say that this is now the beginning of the end? Yes, it is definitely the beginning of the end. There's another um, aspect here that uh, it seems to have been uh, forgotten over the last week. There's this thing called long COVID. There are people out there who experience the disease in a generally mild format, but they are affected chronically. And we still do not know what that means. We're still lacking evidence as to where else in the body the virus might be hiding. I do believe, and I have said this all along, that we will probably need a supplemental uh, for uh, more security for members when the enemy is within the House of Representatives. When the enemy is within, 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 the enemy is within. And he would like always like take me out to like Starbucks or something just so we could like spend that like time together before everybody else woke up. Because you were the only two up. <laughs> And with five kids, you got to figure out how you're going to steal time <laughs> from each of them. From each of them. From each of them. Why do I end up in so much shit? I don't came way too far to be calling it quits. I tell you what, I'm so darn proud. And those poor people who have lost, you know, anyway. A little over a year ago, there was an incredible conspiracy theory posted about me on YouTube. It was so fucking insane, it made Alex Jones sound like Stephen Hawking. In a nutshell, it was basically a video accusing me of being a Zionist shill promoting some kind of Jewish overlord agenda to control the minds of people. Check me out, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago, before the year 94, my cash flow was low, I was low on dope, used to try to talk to fly girls and they was like, no, I knew that all of that had changed once I started to blow, now my pockets are bloated, because I exploded, stayed devoted, dropped a hot album, now I'm loaded, I hang with fly stars, buy cars for 50 thou, the New York City child, thug with a pretty smile, I love this rap game, that's why I married it, it's a big load, but somebody got to carry it, at one point I was about to give up, then got for the record deal and my eyes lit up in 1992 boo my dream came true mm. first i got the fame then the dream came through mm. world up i used to rhyme all the time whoever thought that slim kid from 139 is shine down the line huh you better hide you better lock the motherfucking doors because we on our way back bitch it ain't no fake shit this time
On March 1st of 2018, when Peaches was just 17 years old, she had a child named Cora Miracle. It didn't take long for Peaches' language towards her infant daughter to become more and more unusual, drifting into rather distressing waters pretty quickly. I don't care what nobody says. Nobody can tell me how I should treat my child. You know why? Because she's mine, and I brought her into this world. And I hope she sees this too. I brought you into this world, home. She's a dick sucking hoe, all she do is get fucked all motherfucking day. She's a whole ho I love to watch my baby girl get fucked in her pussy. Get it fucked hard and get it raped by grown men. According to countless videos, streams, Instagram captions, Peaches was said to have admitted to licking her daughter's genitals in addition to slapping and throwing her against the wall. I'm about to cut my baby! <laughs> I cut my baby's neck. <laughs> Amidst further calls of Peaches discussing the prostitution of her one year old child, leaving many onlookers beside themselves. Well, she, she has to be a virgin. Is she a virgin? Um, no, she's not a virgin. Well, how many times has she done this before? Um, she first lost her virginity at four months. I would say she had sex at least maybe about five times in her life. That's perfect. Okay. You better hide. You better lock the motherfucking doors. Cause we on our way back, bitch. It ain't no fake shit this time. I'm moving to the country. I'm gonna eat a lot of peaches. Parasites. Parasites. Yeah. And the. Uh, Welches ist der widerstandsfähigste Parasit? Ein Bakterium? Ein Virus? It's been nearly two weeks since COVID-19 vaccines were first administered in Hamilton County. Many will remember one of the CHI Memorial nurses fainted after receiving the vaccine. Well, since that time, misinformation, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. Our Mary Frances Hoots is fact-checking those claims and putting rumors to rest. We also reached out to CHI Memorial and they said she's fine. Person for CHI Memorial says Dover is doing fine, but does not want to do any additional interviews. I feel fine now, and the pain in my arm is very minimal. All right, just a fact check to reiterate, Tiffany Dover is alive and well. You should see it right up there on your screen. Channel 3 spoke with her moments after she passed out. She said she was fine. CHI Memorial confirmed it was her in that video they released days after she passed out. They confirmed she's back at work and again confirmed she's fine. Hey. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the evil eye of the Lokio. Uh, and, uh, and below there, what, what, what's this down that, the way? That, that's a Roman belt buckle. This, this says parasites. Parasites? Yeah. Good evening, I'm Brandon Rowe and this is City News at 6. Behind me is the aftermath of a early morning fire that killed four people and sent two people to the hospital, one with critical injuries. City News is hearing from residents about the people who lived inside. Just shortly after four o'clock, about 15 minutes, massive bang of panic on my door. I went and opened the door. Gentlemen, no coat, no shoes panicking, screaming there's a fire. Gainesboro resident Vivian Dubois lives a few doors down from the homes that caught a blaze. She and other neighbors tell City News that four of the people who live inside were part of a multi-generational family that had been on the block for years. I'm shocked, saddened, and it's just disbelief. I, I, it, it, you won't be able to think of their processes for at least days, if not more. The fire marshal has not confirmed the cause of the fire or whether there were working smoke alarms in the home. The investigation will take several days, but already the fire chief says one thing is clear. 
This is one of the most, one of the, one of the worst tragedies by fire I've seen in my career.